Hi everyone, I'm Alex and welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna have an interesting hardware review. This time this won't be a computer, but a very epic Chernobyl dosimeter. By the way, about computers, I have a tiny teaser for you, because many of you asked about uh, Chernobyl PDP-11 clone, and uh, actually we got this beauty. It's a Deveca 3 computer that was used very widely in the Chernobyl zone, starting from the control operations of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, ending up with the various Chernobyl research. So in the next episode you'll see that. And the device we are going to talk today about, uh, it was one which was used to actually collect the data to be later processed on that computers. That's perhaps one of the most unusual radiometers I've ever seen, and uh, that thing allowed it to make a lot of very cool discoveries in the Chernobyl zone in the end of 80s. So today you'll learn pretty much, and also why Giga counter and a dosimeter is not the same thing always. Before we continue, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. For those who want much more, join us on our epic Patreon page, where you can find a lot of unique Chernobyl hypes and insights, as well as various bonus materials. So let's do it. For the beginning, let me give you a little insight into the problem. You know, it's a hard not to agree that radiation is exactly what defined the existence of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And even more, the way of contamination was distributed with various winds, lift and so on, and uh, how diverse condition it created, actually is a pretty big subject, which we surely will talk at some point. But for now, today let me ask you one uh, question that looks pretty easy at first glance. How do you measure the radiation? If you have been on some tours to the Chernobyl zone, you likely have seen something like this. However, practically every expert on radiation, if you see that, probably will say something like that. Bullshit. That's because the things actually work far more complex than people normally imagine. Because radiation is not a kind of a magic substance. Behind any emission there is always some physical source. And that sources can be very, very different, as well as in a very, very different way you can measure the emission. You can measure the power of the gamma dose, you can measure the power of beta flux, or a natron flow, or activity, uh, basically counts, yeah? And uh, the same, the elements, they can get filtered or dissolved and accumulated in an absolutely different way. You know, let me give you a single example, yeah? Uh, let's imagine we have an apple that grows in Pripyat, yeah? Well, this one is not, but let's imagine so. Write me in the comments, how do you think, where will be the most contaminated, this part? Huh? Which part will be the most contaminated? The answer is in the seeds. That's because the strontium because it is the chemical analog of the calcium, gets dissolved and filtered in a similar way. So it will mostly be accumulated in hard tissue. So you see the principle, yeah? If you want more examples like this that you probably didn't know about, just uh, write us in the comments, we'll happily tell you. So all of this doesn't mean, of course, that you need to eat apples from Pripyat, yeah? But what about more complex example, when, uh, say, uh, substances um, dissolve it in the water, like, I don't know, in a lake, for example, uh, or uh, in uh, something like that, uh, or uh, we talk about aerosols, like was very widespread back in 1986, because there were a lot of low dispersion substances, yeah, in the air. So, how do you deal with that kind of measurement? What to measure, actually? Well, nowadays, in the zone, there are cutting-edge laboratories, such as the Central Analytics Laboratory, located in the town of Chernobyl. We had a few opportunities to see that place in action. You know, there are various robotic radiometers and spectrometers, and they can give you a full and often pretty creepy picture. If you want to learn more about that place, write us in the comments, please. 
But back in the 80s, the laboratories were very different and many things have been done manually or with these kind of devices, uh, basically such as our hero. So this device is the RKB4 1EM. It's a beta radiometer which allows to understand the activity or say how powerful the beta source is, whether it's solid, a liquid or even a gaseous probe. This device historically was one of the key instruments in the studies, for example, of the cooling pond, a giant water reservoir near the power plant, which received pretty much fallout accumulated on the bottom sediments, yeah, and then sealed and so on. Also, the same with the small rivers of the zone or some really remarkable places like Gliboki Lake, which is like a red forest but liquid. And uh, all the data from this research we are now translating to English on our Patreon page, so you surely should check it. You will never find it elsewhere than by us. Like many devices of the times, RKB4 comes in a two large plywood suitcases. They are packed very densely with various tools and modules. And one of them contains electronics and power units, another houses detectors and various spare parts. And all of this was actually never used, I mean, this very device, and came to us still sealed in this very thick plastic bags with the silica gel. We unpacked it, and this is how it looks like, ready to use. There is a power unit, which is all at the same time is a charger for the batteries. You know, yeah, this could be used in the field conditions as well. I have no idea how it was possible to carry because it's exceptionally heavy, but it was possible. And there is also an analytics unit uh, to which you connect one of two detectors depending on the task. The bigger one called BDGB02, it's for gaseous and liquid probes, and the smaller vertical BDGB07 is for solid probes. Why they look so unusual, we will see just in a few seconds. On the top of the BDGB02, there is a large silver colored cap for rinsing it, and there are also two smaller connectors that using which you pump inside a probe with a rubber tube and this hand pump. There is also a notice that when device is working, you must not open it. Because what is inside is very, very sensitive. The detectors here are not Geiger tube based. You see that plates? These are so-called scintillators. That's a special kind of radiation detector that uses a special crystal which emits photons when hit by radiation particles. Those photons are being registered by photomultipliers which generate electrical impulses. And the computing sockets then process that and give the actual measurements. I really didn't want to dismantle the actual detector, so I opened the spare parts box and just look how beautiful are these devices. Really, it's magical, such a little bit old, let's say, but pretty impressive. This detector requires certain adjustments if you work not with water, but some liquids with higher density, such as milk, for instance. So for this, you may need so-called phantoms, uh, that's uh, the same like panels, but from metal or different material. So you install them instead of some of the insulation panels. It's uh, very well explained in the manuals, because some of them also design it for calibration. And according to the user manual, this calibration has to be done practically every time before you actually make any big measurements. Uh, so that's what you use for liquids and gases, yeah, but uh, what if we deal with the solid probes? For example, uh, remember our conversation yeah, about... Uh, sorry, uh, um, the have you seen my apple? Um, such a green one, I had it in the fridge. Uh, yeah, such a green apple. Uh, that was a probe! Uh, no. That was a probe! You ate my probe! Fishing, go measure bananas. Two things, I can't, because... In bananas there is potassium, and second, I ate them in the morning. Chernobyl family. Uh, so, back to the subject. <coughs> uh, if you uh, 
if you need to measure a solid probe, you will need already this kind of a detector, uh, which is called BDGB07. It's smaller and uh, it's optimized specifically for the solid probes. The best result, however, uh, you will achieve if you dry out the probe first and uh, then burn it in a special burner, which will not further contaminate it chemically. Yeah? And then you analyze the ashes, because ashes always will have the maximum concentration of the pure nuclides. So in the set, uh, there are various measuring uh, such metal jars uh, to properly get enough for the, these plastic containers, uh, which have a very thin film installed over. So after you grind the probe and uh, burn it, you place it here. When the probe is loaded, uh, you have to switch on the power supply and then the analytics unit. It's pretty important that at least one of the detectors is actually connected, otherwise the device can get broken. And it can work from that power supply or internal battery pack. And then you can start measuring the activity, specific or volumetric. And uh, you have to reset the uh, logic circuit and then you choose a duration of the measurement cycle either 10 seconds or 100 seconds or continuous until you stop it. So the display will turn off and show you a result when the each cycle is ready or until you stop it. So you need to make from 10 to 30 cycles depending on the particular isotope, there are different settings for them. And of course it's not very convenient to just sit and watch it, so you can connect a special printer that will print your result every time uh, it is ready. And after you have a, such a table with the results of measurement, you have to start a little bit of super mathematics, because you need to process the data manually and pass it to a set of pretty complex formulas with various adjustments, multipliers and so on. And uh, then you can use the tables that give you a result based on isotope combination, uh, for example, strontium plus yttrium, and on the type and nature of the probe. So really not easy. So imagine that is how people used to work back in the 80s and how much they could do with using this equipment. Of course, nowadays we have absolutely different, more sophisticated and uh, much more compact devices like uh, this one, for example, this is called cadmium. Yeah, and uh, by the way, if you want to see this beauty in action, just write us in the comments. And for now, that's it. Uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check our Patreon page. There you can find really much interesting. See you next time.